150 families in the valley signed up to get solar power, understanding that some of them would have to wait a few more weeks for new undamaged batteries. One of the most important contributions that Self made to this field was, was using microcredit that would allow rural families in, in developing countries to pay for solar over time. We demonstrated the willingness and ability of rural families to pay for solar electricity if you can provide the financing and if you can train the local people to maintain the equipment. Self-trained local students in the basics of electricity and solar installation. Solar modules should face what direction? South. South. They reached out to train women also so that everyone has a chance to learn not only how to maintain the systems, but to go on to spread the technology and make a living themselves. Watts equals amps times volts. With the microfinancing plan, the people are able to make regular installments for solar home systems that they will have paid off in three years, but own for at least 20. So, back to Vegas again, huh? Back to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> we need to be very transparent. And I've even put it in a transparent paper. Everything transparent. I love it. They lined up, eager to claim their new equipment, even though they had to haul it many miles into the mountains. And so begins the house-to-house -house labor of installing the solar systems. Oh my, that's beautiful. That's nice, isn't it? Lights would really work well in here. Yeah. That'd be good. Well, have yeah, plenty of light. Ah, Solar panels rest near the prayer flags on the wooden roofs. For the people of Bhutan, it is no small feat to transform the light of the sun. For them, it is a magical moment where the radiant light of the universe meets the inner light of wisdom, compassion, and tolerance. <laughs> Round him up, hit him out. Next chance. It's been a pleasure just walking to each house and uh, seeing how people are living and then just seeing the, the instant transformation. 
from the time you show up at the house to the time you leave, that their house and their lives have been transformed. From the little old lady who stands and watches my every move, the wonder on her face. How's it going to change your life? It will change the way they um, live their lives at night. It might be more handicrafts. It might be more education. It might just be more enjoyment of their time together as a family. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a, a kind of a revolution uh, from darkness to daylight. These people have been living for centuries, maybe thousands of years without light. <laughs> Solar systems allow for better health care so that vaccines can be stored, babies don't have to be delivered in the dark, and stitches don't have to wait until the morning. For the valley as a whole, what it does is it makes it more of an attractive place to stay and to keep the traditional way of life while still modernizing and, and hopefully taking the things they want from the modern world that electricity allows. The primary reason for being itself is to keep people from moving to the city, to keep the balance of our ecology, so that the country, the country people don't go to the city, and the city people can come back and live in sustainable villages. And we keep the sustainable village as the, the model for what we're doing for the world. Development is important if it makes people happy. And preserving of the natural environment is a very, very important part of gross national happiness. So everything is one really actually at the end of the day. As winter approaches, the entire Pobjika Valley waits for the return of the black necked cranes from Tibet. It's said they always arrive on an auspicious day of the lunar calendar, and they circle the Gante Monastery three times before landing, as if to pay their respects to the beauty that surrounds them. We heard the calls of the crane, then we looked up, we saw two cranes just flying down. enough.